Now that I realize the science behind the debate on global warming is not that strong and that there really isn't a scientific consensus, now I want you to forget that and ask what if. What if the science was rock solid? What if there was a scientific consensus? What would it cost to implement the Kyoto Protocol? Well, as I mentioned in the segment about the background to the agreement, the United States is the biggest producer of CO2 emissions. We're the biggest polluter. According to the agreement, the magic number is seven. We need to get a 7% reduction in our 1990 CO2 emissions. Well, it's not 1990 anymore, and we've been busy making stuff in the meantime. So our CO2 emissions are actually higher than they were back in 1990. That makes the magic number closer to 30, about a 30% reduction in CO2 estimates by CO2 reductions by one estimate. That's a tall order. How do you get that reduction? Well, you get folks to burn cleaner fuel. And that will probably require change out in equipment, both on a huge industrial level like refineries, uh, car manufacturers, plastics manufacturers, but also on a consumer level like uh, furnaces, changing from um, heating oil to natural gas. That, that will mean replacing prematurely existing stock and buying brand new equipment. That equipment is going to cost money. But also, keep in mind that there's already a huge demand for natural gas. It's a great fuel, but the supply, or I should say the distribution of the supply, has not really kept up with the demand. That's why you see very scary headlines for increases in heating costs over the winter. Now, equipment upgrades, um, fuel increases, those are some of the costs, but they'll have sort of a, um, an additional effect in terms of increased energy costs will make it more difficult, more expensive relative to countries that are not adopting a CO2 program, a CO2 reductions program, to make stuff in this country. U.S. labor costs are already high and we're already shedding certain kinds of jobs to the economies of India and especially China. Increased energy costs from a CO2 reduction program are, is only going to accelerate that trend. And then there are the costs of the regulations themselves. There will be government rulemaking proceedings. There will be lawsuits. The environmental regulatory agencies on both the state and a federal level will bulk up staff. You and I are going to pay for that. There's actually one country out there that has already implemented Kyoto and that's New Zealand. Now I should say they didn't exactly do this for their health. Their political leadership emphasized that money, to, money was to be had. It was expected that New Zealand would have surplus reductions that it could sell on the open market in an emissions trading scheme. Well, we don't have an emissions trading scheme yet, and New Zealand actually has more greenhouse gas emissions than was originally estimated. It has cost them so far over $700 million, and they're not especially happy about it. The total economic impact of implementing the Kyoto Protocol in the U.S. economy has been estimated by the United Nations. The U.N. estimates it will reduce U.S gross domestic product, that's the sum of everything we make and sell, by about 1 to 2 percent. That's a small relative number, but when you bash it up against an absolute number like 12 trillion dollars, which is U.S. GDP, it becomes something like 120 to 240 billion dollars. That's a large number. At the beginning of the segment, I asked you to just forget about the science, forget about the debate, just assume that everything's great. Well, remember the science and remember that there are some questions there. Now we've looked at the economics and the economics are just plain terrible. Do we really want to spend several hundred billion dollars on something we're not too sure about?